Grade 4 Math, number 33, Estimate Quotients Using Multiples. Did you know we can use multiples to estimate? Yep, we can. I want you to remember that a multiple is a product of a number and a counting number. Okay, So if these are our counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the multiples of 5 would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. See? They're multiple 5s. Multiple if you had multiple cookies, that means you would have more than one cookie, right? If you had multiple dogs living in your house, that means you have more than one dog. So a multiple is a bunch of that thing. So if you had three fives, you'd have 15. If you had six, you'd have 30. So these are all multiples of five, this bottom row here, and they can be divided by a counting number with no remainder. So these can all be divided by 5 and not have a remainder, see? So we can estimate with those, with those multiples, okay? So let's say Emma baked 42 brownies. She wanted to give each friend 5 brownies. How many friends will get some? What are the multiples of 5 that are around 42? That's what we ask ourselves. Well, 5 times 8 is 40, and 5 times 9 is 45. 40 and 45 are multiples of 5. So if we wanted to estimate how many of her friends would get brown, get a, a bag of 5 brownies, it would be 8 or 9 friends. And chances are it's 8 friends because this is 45 and she only has 42. So I'd say 8 is the best estimate for the answer. Okay, so let's try another one. This cafe has 54 chairs. If there's four chairs at each table, how many tables are there? Well, if 54 is too big of a number for you to work with, start with a number you know, like 4 times 10. Slowly build it up. 4 times 11 is 44, so 4 times 12 is 48. And keep adding 4 until you get around this number. Here's the number before it and the number after it. So 4 times 13 and 4 times 14. So that means there's 13 or 14 tables. See? Now, if there's 54 chairs, they would need 56 to have the 14th table. See? So there wouldn't be four chairs at that table. There'd be only two, wouldn't there? So 13 is probably the best answer for that estimate. Okay? How about this one? What if you have 85 divided by 6 and you wanted to estimate what the answer would be. Well, 85 divided by 6. Let's see how big we can get with the 6. 10 times 6 is 60, but that's not close to 85. We need to add more. If we do 6 times 4, which is 24, that'll get us to 84. That's pretty close to 85. So what we do is we add the factors because the multiples got close. We add the factors of 10 and 4 which is 14, so our estimate is around 14. So let's take a look at this one. We have 412 divided by 7. Well, that's a pretty big number, 412. But do you remember what I taught you in the other videos? That you can multiply a large number like 50 by just multiplying the 10 to the 7 and then adding the 0 later. 7 times 5 is 35, put the 0 at the back, and we now have 350. See? 7 times 9 is 63. If we add 350 plus 63, we're going to get 413. That's really close to 412. So we could say 58 or 59. See? Because 7 times 8 is equal to 56. So that would be 406 then, instead of 413. So it would be it would be one of these. 412 divided by 7 is a, is somewhere between 406 and 413. See? The 412. So you could say that it's between 8 and 9 here, which makes it between 58 or 59, because we have to add the 50 to it, see? 
So it's either going to be 7 times 8 or 7 times 9, which is going to make this 58 or 59, see? So that's our estimate. It's around 58 or 59. So that's what a multiple is, and that's how you use estimates using the, that's how you do estimates using the multiples. You just get as close as you can with the number on the, before it and the number after it, and see which one makes the most sense, and that's your estimate. I'll see you next video. Keep going and doing the great work you're doing. Bye.